There's nothing that frustrates a woman more than a man doing nothing. Now, I can relate to that very well. If you put a surveillance camera in my living room, many nights you would find me sitting on the couch, taking it easy, just relaxing, and my wife, Anitra, buzzing all around, picking stuff up, wiping things down, going in and out and back and forth from the bedroom. Now, I get dizzy <laughs> just watching her do all this. Now, she'll end up turning down the air conditioning because she's getting too hot, and then I have to go over and turn it back up because I'm getting too cold. She says, get up off your behind and you, you won't be so cold. Now, just usually after a long day, after I've worked something like 16 hours, you know, I'm exhausted, I'm tired, and I just need some downtime to sit and relax. You, you hear me? <laughs> some other people feel that way sometime. Now, Anitra, she's also had a busy day. She's also been at it for at least 16 hours with the kids and everything else that she's doing. And she sees me lounging there, and no matter how hard she tries, eventually she blurts it out. I don't know how you can just sit around like that when there's so much to do. To which I say, honey, take a break. Put your feet up. Chillax a little bit. <laughs> At some point, you just have to stop, decide to stop, and take it easy and chill out a while. Well, I can't just chill out when there's all this other stuff to do. Is the usual reply is she gets up and buzzes off to do whatever else, some other project. Now it's hard, always hard, to talk about men and women without falling into the usual stereotypes, but that's always kind of fun too. But <laughs> this morning I want to go beyond the usual dialogue about men or women. So men, I want you to li lift your hand up and just pull off the mask. Just pull off your mask this morning put down, aside and put down the titles and the degrees, doesn't matter what it is, doctor, senior consultant, division leader, regional head of a four state area, you know, we all have the senior partner, CEO, whatever it is, put it down, put it aside, chillax for a minute, and let's get real. Without the external identities, because this morning I want to talk about what it means to be a man in a way that we don't usually do. And we especially don't do it with women around. So I want to talk to the real you. The part of you that is no different from any other man that's sitting in here this morning. The part that is referred to as, when we're referred to as being created in the image of God. It's not about your clothes, your watch, your title, or physical attributes. All of that, as we know, can go in a flash. I want to talk about those things that truly make you who you are. Now, women, are you interested at all in hearing about what men talk about, what we're, what we're about? If you're not, I mean, if you're not, that's all right. All right. I thought so. You know, well, you know, maybe if you want to go into it, we'll sit and listen. No, that's good because, women, if you haven't noticed, we men have a hard time taking off the mask, putting down the title, because so much of what we think of ourselves comes from our job, our role in the family or in the community. And in fact, this is a disturbing situation. This is a, tr this is a problem. And it's a loss of knowing who we really are. There have been so many changes in our culture in the past 40 years there are many sociologists and psychologists are now making careers out of describing the modern man's lack of direct direction and distinction about what it means to be a man and what masculinity means. Of course, we have all the humor, all the funny things that we, that we like to talk about, but what we need to do is put more focus and more intentionality, intentionality into discerning what a new manhood, what a new masculinity ought to look like. A manhood that truly honors women as equals, 
that not only accepts women partaking in traditional male roles like doctor and CEO, but also one that allows men to play traditional female roles like homemaker and caretaker and secretary and receptionist and those things. A manhood that transcends the old racial hierarchies. It wasn't that long ago that men used to call other men boy. Now they say Mr. President. So things have indeed changed, and yet we white men and black men and men of all different races and ethnicities, in many ways we're still trying to find our voices as equals. And too many of us still retreat into rather segregated lives instead of doing the hard and the courageous work of reimagining what this new manhood needs to look like. And a manhood that is comfortable with the fact that some men, in fact, love other men. You know, for a long time, we men have defined ourselves against women and gay people. Right? I mean, I grew up, if you grew up like I grew up, right, we were told from the time we were really young, if we ever did anything or said anything that was considered feminine, we were told, don't be a sissy. Quit acting like a girl. What are you, gay? Right? That's, that, I, I don't know, nod your head if you grew up with some of that, because that's certainly, that's certainly how I grew up. And, now, as many of us have come to the point in our lives where we truly respect women and where we also respect our gay brothers as fully human and what God meant them to be, then how now do we distinguish what it means to be a man if we don't have those things to point at? The other day I heard my son, he's eight years old, he was playing with a friend and I overheard him, I was in my office and they were out in another room and I thought to myself, now here's a conversation that you would have never heard when I was growing up. His friend called something gay and my son said, but we like gays. <laughs> and his friend said, what's gay? And my son said, two men who love each other. Oh yeah, his friend said, and, and two women who love each other. And my son said, no, that's lesbians. <laughs> and there was this long pause. I'm listening from the other room, waiting to hear what comes next. His friend said, what did you say? <laughs> lesbians. What's that? Well, that's two women who love each other. That's lesbians. And his friend, he looked at me and said, I have no idea what you're talking about right now. <laughs> <laughs> but people have to be careful letting their children come over and play at the Unitarian minister's house. <laughs> They might come home with a, some new vocabulary words. <laughs> you have to know that my son's favorite uncle in the world is gay, and he just thinks he is the nicest, because he is, the nicest, coolest person on earth, practically. So in a sense, we do not need, we, we do need to teach our children a new vocabulary, because the old vocabulary is outdated and insulting across all those differences that I was talking about.